What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Professor Anime. Welcome back to another video. In today's video guys, I am here to bring you all my review of Kabaneri of the Iron Fortress Episode 3. So, let's get right into it. So when it comes to this episode of Kabaneri of the Iron Fortress, you know, pretty much we had a few info dumps regarding the Kabaneri, you know, what exactly they are capable of, and also from episode 2, we saw Mume and our main MC uh, character within the series, uh, Isoka, hop aboard on the train in which everyone has now evacuated on uh, from to get away from their uh, hometown, which has been completely destroyed by the Kabane. The only problem is, while it might seem like everyone is safe the problem is that Mume and Isoka are Kabaneri they are half human and half Kabane and really the central theme of this episode was you know can the civilians end up trusting these Kabaneri because ultimately when it boils down to it they are still half Kabane and this really proves uh, some problems you know from uh, the Kabaneri to interact with you know the rest of the humans because ultimately they do not trust one another. Isoka is pretty much, you know, trying to stop Mume from, you know, provoking the humans to end up shooting them in the process or in general just making them go mad and make everything more chaotic. And Mume, on the other hand, is pretty much, you know, just being all chaotic. Really, the only one person that really tends to understand and care for these people, because at the bottom line, you know, they are still people. While they might be Kabane, they are still people. We have our high priestess within this episode, you know, basically announce to the public that, you know, these are not our enemies. They are still human, so get over it, you know start to trust them because they mean no threat against us you know we had to where the priestess ended up stabbing isoka just to gain the trust of her followers in order to believe what she is saying you know and also we had that great speech by isoka basically give out that you know my dream is to ultimately destroy the Kabane, I don't want to bring harm to any of you. I want to just completely destroy the Kabane after what they did to me in the past. What was his past? Well, in a few episodes ago of Kabaneri the Iron Fortress, we actually saw Isoka end up losing someone who was close to him in another attack, and it was a young girl. So ultimately, you know, us viewers are going to assume that, you know, this must have been his sister, and we find out in episode 3 that ultimately that was the case. He ended up losing his sister, and instead of the big brother that he should have been, you know, trying to protect his sister, he ends up running away as soon as, you know, she was attacked, and and he tried to get help uh, from other people because, you know, simply he was too scared. He was a child at the time, and uh, eventually, when everything was uh, calm, there's no Kabaneri, or Kabane, I should say, in sight, he ends up going back to his sister's corpse and ultimately had to put her out of her uh, misery because she was turning into a Kabane herself. Now, when it comes to the ending of this episode, in episode one, you know, I thought, you know, there was just no way that, you know, this main character, Isoka, could have suppressed this deadly virus so easily. And we come to find out in this episode, you know, that uh, basically, you know, the virus is back. And the virus is now, I guess, hitting his body even harder. Because now it is getting harder for him to suppress this virus. And it seems that he has almost turned, uh, you know, full Kabane and is about to bite into the High Priestess. However, I don't really think, you know, she is going to get bit because, I mean... You know, just how the way the episode ended, it assumes that, you know, he will end up biting the High Priestess, but out of two things that are going to happen, it's either going to be, you know, he's eventually going to gain control of himself, or either, or maybe three things. He's eventually going to gain control of himself, or eventually Mume is going to pop up, or the... A royal guard uh, that's in like the blue samurai looking outfit that has long hair who is very you know skeptical on Mume and Isoka in general is probably going to arrive and basically you know probably push Isoka off of the high priestess or something like that so we'll just have to wait in the next episode on what exactly is going on with that but it makes you want to think you know how 
how, how you know much longer will Isoko be able to suppress this? On the other hand, how long is Mume going to be able to suppress this? You know, we still don't really know much about Mume. You know, she has been a Kabaneri longer than um uh Isoka. However, she did state that, you know, your body needs training and getting used to, you know, the Kabaneri, uh sort of form that you have now uh, taken, now that you're part Kabane. So, it seems that, you know, eventually by the uh, past few, or the next few episodes of Kabaneri the Iron Fortress, we're going to see, you know, Mume start training uh, Isoka's body more and more. We got a little bit of it in this episode, but nothing ultimately really happened, which is a good thing, because if he would have trained, you know, that quick and already learned some stuff, you know, that would have been, you know, really stupid. There would have been no development with that. It would be completely rushed, which is something we don't want. So yeah, when it comes to the info dumps in this episode of Kabaneri the Iron Fortress, we got a little bit of, you know, a few things, which is, you know, how long is someone going to be able to actually suppress this virus, and how far do they need to go to train their bodies in order to suppress this virus, uh, and also, you know, it, it seems that Mume, since she's half Kabane, she can sense other Kabane that are in the vicinity. In this episode, we actually had uh, one woman who was pregnant but also I guess was bitten by the Kabane and Mume was able to sense this you know it was foreshadowed that something was going on with that uh, woman and by the end of this episode we see her turn into a Kabane but before all that Mume actually stormed right into one of the cart rooms and she was like I sense a Kabane here but I don't see one so you know she was assuming that you know there was a Kabane in the car but ultimately there were just humans lying about and it seems that you know with the woman who was wearing you know pretty much all that getup you know she was hiding her uh, bite mark and trying to conceal it away because she didn't want to die because she was still pregnant however it turns out that she ended up getting killed within this an uh, anime episode and Mume was the cause of a death to a Kabane uh, to a woman who has now turned into a Kabane but also the death of a child as well which makes me want to assume you know if you know someone is still alive okay and they are pregnant you know, and they are turning Kabane, I'm assuming that, you know, this virus is going to spread so far to every portion of their body that eventually either the child is going to die regardless, or either, you know, it's going to spawn another baby Kabane. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. We, we really don't know much regarding where the Kabane have come from and all that. Uh, we really don't know much on Mume in general. Everything with this series is just sort of vague at the moment. From these past few episodes that we have gotten out of Kabaneri the Iron Fortress, everything is just pretty much vague. But hopefully our uh, questions do end up getting answered eventually. We still need backstory on Mume. We don't know how exactly she ended up turning into a Kabane in general but hopefully later down the line you know we will get backstory on that and how long she has been a Kabaneri and why she knows so much also we uh, need some backstory on how exactly the Kabane ended up coming to be you know what exactly went on with that is it man-made I mean it has to be maybe you know because this is a virus after all however we don't really know anything you know could go down when it comes to this and also when it comes to, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what exactly is going to go down with our main male character, how he is going to try to adapt to the virus, um, how long can he suppress this for, you know, what are the sort of limitations when it comes to him suppressing the virus. You know, we did hear a little bit from Mume that, you know, uh, she can go all out when she removes the ribbon, kind of like how our uh, main male character Isoka ends up uh, suppressing himself with his little contraption that he has on. Um, he can actually take that off and they will be able to go out on their full potential. However, they're going to get immediately tired after that and I think she ended up saying as well that the virus spreads quicker. So, I don't really know. 
I, I don't really know um, how exactly everything is going to go down, but hopefully everything gets resolved in the next few episodes of Cabinary of the Iron Fortress. Um, and also, just for a short measure, we actually ended up getting some, uh, you know, info dump as well regarding, you know, Mumei and Isoka. Since they're both Cabinary, they both need blood to actually survive um, to satisfy their hunger. So there's a little sort of conflict when it comes to the humans and the Cabinary, even though they are half human. They're still half Cabinary and they still need blood. So how exactly they are going to get the blood? You know, not exactly sure. Is everybody going to cut themselves for, you know, for them to eat blood or what's going on there? So yeah, guys, that about does it for this episode review of Cabinary of the Iron Fortress. Pretty much what we saw in this episode was the internal struggle between the humans and the Cabinary, and eventually we are going to have to see some level of trust and understanding come between the two, uh, because you know that's going to be the only way how they're going to be able to fight off against the Cabane. And also remember, Isoka is the only one who knows uh, how to create such a weapon in order to fight back the Cabane. So. Yeah, humans better get your trust level on. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this review of Cabinary the Iron Fortress and also what you thought about this episode in the comments down below. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to drop a like. It always helps. And, you know, just the support that I'm getting throughout my videos is just insane. Thank you guys so much for that. And of course, if you want to stay up to date to my future content on this channel and see other reviews from me on this channel, then hit that red subscribe button below and you will never miss a video from me. That about does it for this video, guys. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.